to another episode of Wow Can Cook. My name is Tracy and I'm here with my friend, Dr. Gloria. And today we're going to make Dr. Gloria's world famous red sauce that you can use for pasta, pizza, or anything that you would use on for a regular tomato sauce. So why don't you tell them about it, Dr. G? Well, you notice today I put on my, my working shirt to help you, rolled up my sleeves here. This one has most, the most ingredients probably, or steps, I should say, maybe not ingredients, of most of the sauces that I make, but it's spectacular. It's the one that I won the award for because the judges couldn't tell there wasn't any tomatoes. So this took a long time to create it and to perfect it. But what we're going to do is is cook it, right? You've already done the um, the fresh butternut squash. Did you cook it and uh, bake it and then scoop it out? I will explain what I did last night, okay? Okay, perfect. So I had a garden fresh, large butternut squash. Actually, I used about one and a half of them because she said four cups of squash. So I right. roasted them. I cut them in half, cleaned out the seeds, roasted them at 400 for 45 minutes. Okay. And then I scooped out the pulp and set it aside. Okay. I also, on the same tray for the same amount of time, I took three beets and I left them whole because I didn't read the ingredients all the way. <laughs> and I roasted these as well at 400 for 45 minutes. And then I read the ingredients more carefully and I sliced them. So I appear like a good student. <laughs> you did slice them? Yep, they're sliced. Okay, but let's 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 use that as an example because not everybody's going to read the read the you know word for word like you didn't. If you do what you did, just you don't have to slice them nicely. Just cut them in chunks because you're going to blend it later on anyway in the slow cooker. The point is, if you don't have, it's not like you're going to serve it that way. But the point is, if you have big chunks, they don't blend good unless you put everything into a food processor, and that's too much work especially when it's hot. Okay. So you didn't do yeah. anything wrong. You just made a little more work for yourself. <laughs> okay. All right. So then what did you do? Then I took a zucchini and you said two large zucchini. Yes. But in Tracy's house, this is a large zucchini. Oh my God. So, okay. I, so I, Tracy, one, one large one is fine. <laughs> well, I figured that's actually probably four zucchini yeah. regular size so I took a half of one of those and then I put it through my handy dandy food chopper then I also did the same with the onions and I have more here because this is just one onion there's two more in there but I wanted to kind of show them what happens when you do this so well I yes I want you to because I've seen those like at the county fair, but I've never used one. So show us what that handy dandy little chopper is. So you place the onion slice in there and you slap it. So if you're having a bad day, whoops, I need to lock the blade in. You can take out your frustrations. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly, just like that. You go, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> And it's super simple. And then you have beautiful uniform chunks, which sometimes you need them and sometimes you don't. Good. I've just chop, chop, chop. And I like it because it's really nice and uniform and it doesn't get any squishy at all. Right. Okay. So how many onions did you do? Did you do three or? Yeah, three. Okay. So, and, and here's another tip. Remember that when you're cooking Italian, which is just an Italian pasta sauce, the more onions and garlic you have, the more depth of flavor you're going to have when the sauce reduces. We're going to cook it a long time so that the sauce reduces. That means it's going to get about half as uh, the amount of quantity that you started with. And that's what makes that really thick, rich Italian sauce that you were talking about, that you can put on anything that you would use um, a red Italian sauce, pizza, lasagna, you know, um, stuffed shells, and of course, all of your pasta dishes, your spaghetti and your your rigatoni and whatever else. Okay, so now what? Go ahead. You've got to list oh, there. I'm, I'm watching. I have all my spices measured, my vinegars. I'm ready to go. Okay, so you have 
the squash that you scooped out after you baked it, uh, you really don't have to put them in that pot if you're going to cook them in the slow cooker. But oh. you do, you, you don't really have to. Uh, what I do, though, and I've got it on the recipe here. I'm cheating because I printed out the recipe because I don't remember all this. I just wrote five recipes over the weekend that I had to try out. So I have five meals in my refrigerator. I always saute the onions and garlic. Remember, that's kind of our rule. If you saute the onions and garlic, even if you're throwing it in a slow cooker, you're going to get that depth of flavor from the brown edges. So why don't we saute the onions and garlic okay. and everything else you can throw into the slow cooker, uh, Tracy. Okay, I'll go get the slow cooker. Okay. And again, I'm, while Tracy's doing that, I'm going to explain because many people don't understand the difference between a slow cooker and a crock pot. A crock pot generally has uh, like low, warm, and high. It doesn't give you a chance to adjust the temperature. A slow cooker has like an oven would have, where it has a dial or a digital um, clock that allows you to say, I want it to be high. And when it gets bubbly, then you can lower it so that it stays at a very low, roaring boil, very low. You don't want it splattering all over. But when you do that and you cook it for several hours, especially overnight, you get that thick, true Italian or Sicilian, because I noticed the Sicilian sauces when I was in Sicily were thicker than the Italian ones. And uh, it makes that richness that, that we're, we're working to achieve. So she's got a slow cooker and that's great. What, what controls does that have? What temperatures, uh, Tracy? No, it's just a crock pot. Oh, it's a crock pot. So what are the temperature? Yeah, but the newer ones have more temperature changes. No, Does it it's say? Just got, it's just got the same, just two. Just two. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to put it on high until it really bubbles. Okay. When you get everything in there. And the only thing you're going to saute to make it easy is the onion and the garlic. We always saute onions and garlic in any of Dr. Gloria's recipes because they don't taste the same if you just throw them in. And even for like chicken soup, saute them first. So you will put that on high till it bubbles, a full roaring bubble, boil. And then you're going to put it on low and leave it overnight. It's that simple. It's the, it's the most complicated part, maybe not complicated, but time consuming, is what you had to do to bake the butternut squash and bake the beets. That's the most complicated part. I've tried cooking the beets, like steaming them, you know, it's not the same. They need to be baked. It's a yeah, different. no, it was, it wasn't hard. What was hard is this weekend making moussaka. Moussaka. Well, no, my friend, my Sasaka. best friend's Greek and she says it because I was hot at moussaka and she's like, it's moussaka. <laughs> oh, moussaka. Okay. Thank you for that. That's why I, I saw you your kitchen. Of my messy kitchen. I saw it. <laughs> Was it oh good? Gosh. What? The kitchen was, oh my gosh, or the or the dish was good. The dish was amazing. The kitchen was just a disaster. I was working. I know. I cooked for six hours. I did too, but I made five meals in six hours. You made one. Yeah. But my kitchen was as bad as yours. It took hours to clean it up. Yeah, but what a great idea because now you're food prepped for the whole week. Well, so and with, with, you know, everything going on in, in my household and my career and writing and, and supporting all of the programs that we have for QHS, uh, there just isn't any time to cook during the week. I sometimes barely run in and heat up a bowl of something or, a, you know, throw something in the oven real quick um, and and eat it in a hurry because I don't always have the time especially since I'm working with patients in between. So there's your handy daily garlic, garlic press again. Yes, this is the one thing I forgot to do. So I'm That's just going to okay. finish this up. And I don't want to tell them, you don't want to put the garlic and the onion together. You want to get the onion going and then add the garlic so you don't burn the garlic. Boy, right? you're, you're wanting an A for, uh, for the day, aren't you? Okay, get your, get your skillet hot, dear heart. Oh, the onion's going. Okay, so make sure that you stir them. Don't ignore them because they can burn. 
and have your flame high enough that you're going to get some little brown, almost burnt tips. Not the whole onion, just the tips. And then when okay, you see that avocado really... oil for this because it has a higher smoke point. Right, right. We experimented this weekend with, um, and I'm going to go blank just because I wanted to say it. I'll tell you in a minute. With the with another oil that is even higher point, that's I, I'm going blank. Algae, I apologize. Is it the algae oil no, or something like that. No, no. I'll tell you in a minute. I'll go grab the bottle. Okay. Um, but it, we had to use a really high temperature for something I was experimenting with, and where I am now, the fire detectors are so sensitive. One little bit of smoke, and the whole building's listening to me. So I have to be really careful. I know it's embarrassing. And I'm on the second floor, so that's even worse. Everybody hears it. Oh, uh, that's funny. Yeah. Okay, so you used avocado oil. You can use coconut I you were oil. I'm gonna go as get well. the bottle. Let's see what it is while I'm doing this. Okay, let, let me go get it right now. Be right back. And I am just using my favorite pampered chef garlic press. If you have a friend that sells Pampered Chef, I highly recommend the citrus juicer and the garlic press because you don't need to peel the garlic first. You just need to cut it in half. And the citrus juicer is amazing. I use it for limes and lemons pretty much every day. Grape seed oil, like this. Grape seed? Grape seed. And it's one of my European chef friends that said, why aren't you using grapeseed oil? He's, um, actually, I think he's Greek, and uh, but raised in Italy. And he is a, you know, Cordon Bleu chef and does the no nightshades because he learned from me. And so we tried it and it has no flavor. It's like avocado oil where it's a real neutral flavor. So when I do a wok or something that needs to be really high temperature, We've been using the grapeseed oil, and I really like it. You might want to try it for something that's really, you know, like deep frying something. Or um, I haven't tried it for things like my sweet potato French fries yet, but I'm going to. But we used it for a dish that I did this weekend, and it was amazing. And there's no flavor to it. So yeah, I've not used it before, that. but I think it's a polyunsaturated fat, which has, I think it has more omega-6s than I prefer to eat. I see. And this is gluten-free, so that's why I, I tried it. Okay, try your onions. Okay, all on, all oils are gluten-free. <laughs> yes. But, oh my God, I got to tell you you what happened this weekend. So my friend made Greek meatballs. And I said, yeah. I said you're going to make them gluten-free for me, aren't you? And she goes, of course I am. And so then I said, send me the recipe. Because I woke up in the morning and this ring, look at how loose it is. This ring it wouldn't come would not off. come off. And right. I'm like, there was gluten in this. And she goes, no, there wasn't. I used panko instead of breadcrumbs. I'm like, what do you think panko's made of? <laughs> yeah, but you can, I have panko. I used it Saturday, but mine is gluten-free. It says right on it. Well, she does, regular panko's not gluten-free. You bought No, it isn't. You know. she You're did absolutely it. correct. So, and I could tell this is my gauge. I mean, if my rings don't come off, oh, I know. me too. Me too. And it's my gauge for gluten and it's my gauge for nightshades or MSG. With MSG, my feet hurt so bad, they burn that I can hardly walk. If I get accidentally get some when I'm out, but I don't eat out very often. So how are the onions doing? They're good. They're just not browning yet. Okay. They take a while. Um, so what else did you have to prep? I have everything prepped. I'm ready to go. You want me to bring the crock pot over and get started on blending? The yeah, why don't you? Because you can then tell us tell us what you have prepped according to my recipe. Like you have a cup of dry red wine or are you using uh, balsamic? Vinegar. I don't want to open a bottle of wine and not, be able, and not drink it, waste it. So I use vinegar. Okay. Do you have any dark balsamic vinegar? Yeah, it's right there. Oh, okay. That's what you're using. Okay. That's perfect. Yeah. yeah, you don't have so to have we'll one. Start with these in the crock pot. Yes, that's your squash that you've already baked and scooped out. Now, I will at this juncture, I want to remind people if you don't want to go through all that, in the fall, this time of year especially, 
any time from usually late September to about the end of January or February, you can get the squash in most stores, butternut squash, peeled and cut in little chunks in the frozen section of your grocery store. So look for it. Um, that's what I did the last time I made the sauce to freeze it because I didn't I didn't have the time to be baking it. Okay, so you put the squash in the crock pot in the slow cooker. What else? Your beets can go in there. Now I'm gonna put the beets. Okay. And now what? Uh, it, it really doesn't matter what what um, I would put the uh, the cup of the or you know several tablespoons of the balsamic vinegar if that's what you're going to use. You would use a cup if you were using dry red wine. So you'll have to adjust that, Tracy, as it cooks. After okay. it's cooked four or five hours, you'll be able to taste it and know if you need more or not, okay? It is not a recipe set in stone because it depends on how tart you like it or if you want a little more. Okay, so then you can do, hold on. Um, now you can add your herbs. Actually, you can add the Bragg's apple cider vinegar too. You're gonna, do you have that out? Yep. Okay, so That's here's the- one and a half. Vinegar. Okay. And then here's all my herbs. So I have. It's four tablespoons of each. I'm not so, sure what this one is, but it's something. <laughs> it, oh, dear God. Okay. Four <laughs> tablespoons of each of dried oregano and basil. Okay. Here's the oregano. Okay. Because I had to make that myself. And here's the basil. Okay. And then uh, just put some salt and pepper in to taste. Don't You won't know right now how much you need. So just, yeah, there you go. Give it a good splash of that and some pepper. Now, do you want the sauce to be spicy? Because you love spicy. Sure. I would, put, uh, I would put a little bit of white pepper, hun. And then later on, when it's cooked four hours or more, then you can taste it and go, no, nah, I want more spice. Or, wow, that's really hot. Because you don't want to get it too hot. The the reason is you can't take the heat out once it's in there, okay. but you can always add it. So be careful. Add little by little. Tablespoon of sage. Yes. Tablespoon of thyme. Tablespoon of rosemary. Okay, because are they fresh? No, they're dry. Because it, it's two tablespoons. Well, that's what I mean. I, I've measured it according to your thing. Okay, so two tablespoons. Okay, of rosemary, thyme and sage and now you need some sage, sugar. Now, sugar now this is where this is where you cannot use anything but sugar i've tried it and it's awful i use brown sugar i use the sugar in the raw or i use white unrefined sugar i've tried it with monk fruit i've tried it with lohan i've tried it with powdered stevia and it is not good if you're going to make a true italian sauce you figure if you've got one to two tablespoons of sugar in that huge pot, it's not going to hurt you, even if you're diabetic or you're avoiding sugar, because it's it's such a small amount in a big pot. Okay. Now do I and use now this? you absolutely if you want to With don't splatter man. all over. It's an immersion blender, so be careful because it will splatter. <laughs> Well, I think the slices of the beets are too big. I have to smash them first. Okay, see, that's, see, that's what we learned. Chop the beets, not slice them. Okay, so see, that's what we learn when we do it. I just do it so automatically. Or you could also put it in your, um, in your, you, I have a Vitamix. You have a, uh, I never remember the name. Blend What's your blender? Yes, the Blendtec, which is, in my opinion, the same. Um, so you could always put it in the blend tech, but it's a mess because you have to clean the big thing and put it in and it's, is it blending? Yeah. I'm almost ready to just move it all around. Okay. Check your onions. And did you add the garlic yet? Yeah. I added the garlic because the onions had browned. Okay. So, so go I added the garlic and, it, and then I turned it down. Okay. Check it, please, and make sure it's not burning because garlic can burn real quick. Then it's bitter and you have to start over. Okay, that's good. Are they, they're okay? Smell good? Yep. 
Okay. So now, yeah, tilt your pan, hun. Okay. Tilt your pan to get to get liquid all in one side so it's a little deeper. And then if you just find, there you go. And then you'll find just the right spot and it'll just swirl and everything comes to it. Much easier than, is it working? You got too many ch big chunks, I guess. <laughs> and I can't hear yours. I feel like a little kid. Oh, it's loud. Okay, but going up and down, unless you're having to squash the beets or something is not the way to do it. There you go. You need to get to where you actually have like a whirlpool. Put it there and find just the right um, immersion. In other words, you might have to come up just a little bit. Just don't splatter. At least it's not hot. You're not going to burn yourself. And leave a chunky okay, if you like good. a chunky. Okay. Do you like a little bit of chunks? I do. I don't want big pieces. But... Oh, what about the zucchini? Yep. Put it in. In here or in there? Yeah. Just no. Just put it in. You don't have to saute it. Just put it in. Onions and garlic are the important thing to saute. Should I add the onions and garlic now? Yep. Or do you want to blend what you have in there first before you add them? Are you okay with that? I, you're the boss. I'll do whatever you want me to do. Well, well, but I want to make it easy for you. Blend what's in there, hun. Okay. So that you don't have so much to have to try to blend. Okay. Get those. Get those where they're getting mushy. Like a. Thick... I have a feeling I'm going to be blending this a little bit throughout the day. And you can, as it's cooking, it'll get softer anyway. Then you can do it several times, which you shouldn't have to if you, if you. Um, if you would have put it, for instance, in your blend tech, you probably would have had it done already. Yeah, that probably would have been a good idea. Yeah. Is that burnt on the bottom, I see? No, it's not burnt. It's, it's just brown. I've used this thing a oh. hundred times. Yeah, but those pots last forever. Is that a yeah. Cousinart? Yeah. I don't know. I've had it for so long and I've used it so many times. I've been married for 30 some years, 33. Okay, Have you tried? Here's a, here, okay, go ahead. Here's a kitchen hint. Have you tried soaking uh, and scrubbing gently with a little bit of baking soda to get the colors out of the inside? No, but I'll try that. Baking soda works well. First, 